Uh, there's a difference. It makes, makes people want to cry. That's kind of that's what we need. Amen. Philippians chapter 2. And uh, we got down to verse number uh, uh, 4. Really got on that last week. And I want to hit that just a little bit more this evening. And we'll move real quick. going to take up another offering in just a minute uh, for the family of Beverly. You know, Beverly passed away the other night. And uh, they do not have enough money. I've been talking to her son. And uh, their, their kids, grandkids rode the bus, you know, for years. And Miss Beverly sat right there. When she was here, and she just got worse and worse and worse, and I'm sure, I'm sure everybody knows that already. But anyway, I uh, hope you can give something. We're going to give it directly to them, to the funeral home, to help uh, with her, her her funeral. So I'll do that again here in just a minute. I hate to do that this evening, but uh, they, they need our help, and so let's be a blessing to them. Here it said, uh, look not every man, verse 4, on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Now, we talked about that last week. One of the hardest things there is in a Christian life is to try to put other, other people first. You know, you've heard that old saying, joy, J-O-Y, that stands for Jesus, others, than you, right? And, and we've all heard that and preached it, heard it for years. But boy, that's one of them things that is easy to preach, hard to practice, because this flesh just keeps on rising up, rising up, rising up, and... Uh, you, you think you got it whooped, and it'll be back up tomorrow. You can put this old flesh to death today. You think you have. Buddy, I got the victory over that. And tomorrow you'll be just mean as you was uh, today or yesterday. But that's why Paul said, I die daily. Daily. It ain't something you just come to the altar and say, all right, I'm sanctified, feel the Holy Ghost. I ain't got no worry. That ain't the way it works. You have to do that every day. You only get saved one time. But you got to get right every day. And for most of us, multiple times a day. Amen? <laughs> yes, sir. I heard a preacher say to, uh, that he, that he was talking to online. I don't know if y'all have heard of him or not. He's that, that Todd White guy. He's got a weird sort of guy. he got a healing ministry. And he said, uh, he said that uh, basically that he had not sinned in 18 years. That's what he said. So he'd been saved 18 years. And he said he got the victory over all that stuff. And he's never, he didn't say sin, but he said, I've never Got out of line. I guess that means a sin. One time. Now, somebody somebody talks like that, don't know the definition of sin. Overeating. I say, oh, shut up. Uh, uh, let's talk about something else. Envy, jealousy, pride, self-righteousness, laziness. Oh, uh, somebody asked me, I said, Brother Danny, what is the definition? Definition of glutton. God, people say, "How do you know when you glut it?" And I said, well, "When you throw up, I reckon." <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what is the difference. I think it's when you're hurting real bad right here. Uh, I'm just kidding, but uh, um, he sinned in 18 years. He sinned 18 days, 18 hours. Yeah, man. Uh, the thought of foolishness is sin. That's right. To know to do good and do it not is sin. You mean tell me you've done everything you're supposed to for 18 years? I don't believe that. Nobody has. If you could do that, Jesus wouldn't have died on the cross. He died because we couldn't. He did it because we couldn't. You better thank Him for that. So in verse number number uh, 5, is that let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. So somehow or another, we got to think the mind of Christ and you got to train yourself to do this. Remember when people used to have that little bracelet and everything? What would Jesus do? And that was that was a little fad back, you know, back in the year, a long time ago. People wore them little bracelets, necklaces. What would Jesus do? And if if he was in this situation, that's not a bad way to think, really. Uh, what would the Lord have me to do? I'm going to try to do like he would do. Now, um, let this mind be in you. Now, look what the Lord did. You want an example? Look at verse 6. Who being in the form of God, Jesus was in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And we're going to study that a little bit here in just a minute. Uh, Jesus said, I'm in the form of God, and it ain't robbery to show that he's equal with God. So Jesus Christ was God in flesh. Now somebody said, how in the world was heaven empty? No. God the Father is in heaven. God the Son is, was on earth. God the Spirit came 
and form the body of Christ in our, in our hearts. You say, well, how can he be three different persons and only one God? Because he's God. It's a mystery. That's why, what we call the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Now, you need to learn this. And you need to, you need to get this in your, in your head. And you need to be able to show somebody that in the Scripture. Most people go to a Baptist church and say, you believe, you believe in the uh, Father, Son, Holy Ghost? They say, oh, yeah, sure, I believe that. But they, if, if you held a gun to them, they couldn't show it to you in the Bible. So we're going to look at that a little bit. Is, is Jesus God? Was he God? Now, here's what throws people, like, like Jehovah's Witnesses especially, and I know there's other groups that don't accept um, the Koran don't, the Quran don't accept Jesus as God. They just thought he was a great teacher. And so a Muslim don't believe that Jesus was God in the flesh. But they say, how could he be hungry if he was God? And they don't understand that God was manifest in flesh. So Jesus was God in flesh. He had, he had he, if, you, if you stuck him with a knife, it would hurt, just like us. Uh, if, if he did without sleep, he'd be tired, just like me and you. And, and you got to understand that he was God and man. And you read the Bible, you see it all the way through. As God, as, as man, he went to sleep in a the boat. Then as God, he woke up and said, peace be still, and the waves laid down. So he was, he wasn't half God and half man. He was all God and all man. And you say, well, that, that don't make no sense. That's why you accept that by faith. It's a mystery. You cannot understand that. You can't understand that. You can't understand that. If he's God and he's a man, he's the God man. 100% man, 100% God. He wasn't just a part of God and part of man. You see his humanity, you see his deity. And it's it's odd that it just worked out this time of year when we think about his, the incarnation. When he came to this earth, be incarnated as a little baby in a manger that was God in that manger. God with us. I think I think I heard uh, Brother Derek mention in Sunday school, Emmanuel. Uh, that's what that word means. Emmanuel. God with us. God with us. He came down, felt the same emotions that we feel. Had the same trials that we feel. Who was tempted in all points like we are. Yet without sin. Isn't that something? So don't ever let nobody tell you that. And, and people say, oh, so is God the Father walking around down here? No, it's God the Son. God the Father is in heaven. God is a spirit. He come and took on a body. That was Jesus Christ. And the spirit is everywhere and lives in the heart of a believer. That's a mystery. Take your Bible and turn to 1 Timothy and we'll look at it one more time. I think we hit it last week, but uh, let, just to nail this down, this is basic Christian doctrine that you should know. And I know we've got a lot of people here that maybe haven't been going to church that long that don't know this and don't know where this is at in the Bible. So 1 Timothy 3.16, uh, you'll see it there. Uh, funny that they're not just like John 3.16, 1 Timothy 3.16. 1 Timothy 3.16, and it says this. Now, if you've got a Bible that don't say God... In verse 16, you got the wrong Bible. It's just just King James Bible got this right. That's why we believe. People say, well, why is our church so hung up on the King James Bible? Because of a verse like this right here. It ain't because we're hillbillies and don't know no better. And all the cool preachers on TV got it right. No, the cool preachers on TV got it wrong. I don't want a Bible that leaves God out of 1 Timothy 3, 16. Look what he said. And without controversy, great is the mystery. A mystery is something that's hard to figure out or impossible of godliness. God, G-O-D, capital G, was manifest in the flesh. That's Jesus Christ. Now, if your Bible don't say God right there, you got the wrong Bible. The new Bible say he was manifest in the flesh or he who or who he who or who he or somebody is manifest in the flesh. The King James Bible says God was manifest in the flesh. See, it leaves no doubt. He is manifest in the flesh. That ain't nothing. I'm manifest in the flesh. You're manifest in the flesh. Your Bible says God was manifest in the flesh. I know most of the preachers in town don't get that, but it ain't my fault. I, I ain't called to straighten everybody else. I'm called to preach the Bible. 
And your Bible says God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. That's the gospel right there, buddy. Uh, and, and Philippians 2 said, he thought it in the form of God. He thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now, let's just look just a couple of more verses here uh, before we go. Uh, back to Isaiah chapter 9, if you don't mind there, just a second. I, I won't have you turn to too many verses here this evening, but look back at Isaiah chapter number 9, please. And uh, I want to show you another verse or two of Scripture here as we study this doctrine on the deity of Christ and the Trinity. Um, I know there's lots of, lots of verses uh, in the Bible that uh, uh, say Isaiah chapter number 9, I'm sorry, not number 9, and uh, we'll look at verse 6. There's a lot of verses in the Bible that say uh, that, that people get confused on and wonder about these new modern versions of the Bible, and here's another one. Here's another one. Now, we use illustrations to describe the Trinity the best we can. But none of them are measure up to it. So don't get mad at me if you're watching online. We have people that watch our program that are super critical of everything. I mean, you know, uh, look like look trying to show they're smarter than everybody. I guess I don't know. But anyway, the 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 one illustration is football. One I I gave this to a guy one time at the flea market, and he was some kind of a Indian or some kind of Muslim. Something. Yeah, I said, it's like a football. He said, you compare God to a football? And I, and I said, uh, yeah, just listen to me. He thought it was blasphemy that I compare the football. And I mean, you know, you know what I mean? It's, a, it's an illustration, people. For heaven's sake, he said, you compare God to a football? And I said, yeah, a football is one ball. It's got an outward leather cover. That's your body. Right inside that football is a Rubber lining, that's, that's your, uh, your soul. Your soul shaped just like your body. Like, that's why the rich man had a tongue in hell. Amen? Is, am I right, boys? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Y'all tell me when I'm right and when I'm right. <laughs> you, you ain't bothering me a bit, brother. It's better than everybody sitting here quiet like they usually do. Uh, but uh, anyway... Inside that rubber tubing is air. That's your spirit. One football. Leather, rubber, air. It's all one football. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Now, that's a crude illustration. I understand you can't compare nothing to God. I get it. But that gives you a little thought like ice, snow, water. Three different things, all one thing. All H2O. Is that right? Okay. Tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, water. Y'all been drinking? Good night, y'all. A <laughs> little hyper more than, more, than, more than worse than normal. All right. Got ice, water, and snow. Uh, all three of it ain't nothing but H2O. But it's three forms of it. So that's why the preachers say, one God manifest in three persons. That's about as good as you can get it for our little peewee brain to grasp that. One God manifests himself in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. The picture is at Jesus' baptism. Remember when he got baptized? Jesus went down the water. John the Baptist pulled him up. And a voice spoke from heaven. There's God's Son. A voice said, there's my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. And the spirit came down like a dove on him. There's all three of them in one couple of verses of scripture there in Matthew. So get it, get it in your head. Uh, I, I said Jehovah's Witnesses mainly. I guess there's lots of other groups too. But Brother Derek, I'm sure can help, help you with that. They believe that Jesus was a created whatever being or something. Like in, in that first, right in there in Revelation, where they, right, scripture they use, it. the beginning of the, the firstborn of, every, yeah, the beginning of the creation of God. They, they use, that's their, one of their favorite verses. Say, See there right there, uh, God created Jesus. Uh, no, no, he didn't. Jesus was with the Father before the world ever existed. Before this old world was ever here, brother, 
Jesus was God the Father, was with God the Father, and they were one. And God, in God's mind, He, before this world was ever made, had a plan called the plan of salvation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You want me to just sit down and let y'all do this? I'm just kidding. No, I appreciate y'all going. Keep it up. I'm not telling y'all. Just bring it on, brother. Bring it on. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Now, look at Isaiah chapter 9. I'm just messing with you. I'm glad we can have a good time in church, ain't you? Look, I wouldn't go to a dead church, buddy, if I had to drive 50 miles to find one with some life in it. Isaiah chapter 9, look at verse number 6. And this is 700 years before Jesus came to the manger. For unto us a child is born. Now notice how prophecy sometimes speaks. That's, that's prophetic. That's in the future. But it sounds like it's already happened. A child is born. The prophets do that a lot. And people get messed up on stuff like that. Unto us a child is born. Okay, where is he? Well, he meant 700 years later. You say, why did he say that? Because that's the way they talked. And that's the way the Spirit of God put, had him put it down. Look here. A son is given. as Jesus 700 years before it happened. Now look here. The King James Bible again. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Lord, God, I can't wait for that. We could talk about that for a while, couldn't we? Ain't you glad one day the government will be upon his shoulder? There ain't going to be no voting on it. There ain't going to be no crooked ballots. No mail-ins from eternity somewhere. Uh, when he comes back, they're going to say, Who's, uh, whose side you on? And he's going to say, I ain't come to take sides. I come to take over. He come to take over. Hallelujah, people. He's coming to take over, glory to God. Now, and his name shall be called Capital W Wonder. <whistles> the everlasting father. Look, y'all. It said a boy, a kid was going to be born. He's the mighty God. Now help me with this if you can. I'm not even sure Isaiah even realized what he was writing. I doubt seriously. He's just in the spirit and the Lord. Some holy men of God spake. They move by the Holy Ghost. He probably thought, what? What? Well, Lord, you just said right in here. Yeah, 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 the mighty God. That's blasphemy, ain't it? The Lord said, don't you worry about it. You just write. 700 years, brother. Baby showed up in Bethlehem manger. Mary laid him because there's no room for them in the end. And glory to God, brother, he grew up and walked on water and raised dead people. Gave his life as a sacrifice for our, our sins. Rose again the third day. Ascended up to heaven. He's watching us right now. Thank God one day he's going to come and take us out of here. And home be with him forever. If you can't shout on that, you, your wood's wet. The old preacher said, that's right, brother. That'd make a backslid Methodist. Take a running bit. Amen. A, a child is born, the everlasting father. Oh, look at verse 7. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David. What about that? Good night. So the millennial reign is not going to end. It's going to go right into the eternal reign. After he rules here for a thousand years, right on into eternity. And it says the increase of his government, which I'm thinking it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And there's why all them planets are out there. Finally, the answer is here. God's got a plan for them things. You think he just made all them planets and just have something to do? No, God don't do stuff like that. Ain't no telling what he's got planned for them things. Ain't that something? That's why they call them a plan it. Uh, uh, they, he planned it, brother. And so... Uh, look at that tonight. Now, let's get back to Philippians. I, I really meant to get further than this, but um, uh, I don't think I've ever done this since I've been preaching, but ushers, come on right quick while I'm still talking, and let's get that other offering while we're going back to Philippians chapter 2. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to bug you to death, but if somebody can help, we're going to help this family out. Miss Beverly passed away, and whatever you put in here, uh, we're going to uh, make we'll help them out tonight. So just go ahead and start passing them, fellas, while I'm talking. Philippians chapter number 2. And uh, I know some of y'all sitting there saying, boy, I like us doing church fast, brother. If you do this fast, we can get out. No, no, you wouldn't like us all the time. Uh, Philippians chapter number two. Look at verse number 
seven. Going to help them that, Miss Beverly, you can write a check to our church or just put it there in that offering plate. That would be a, that would be a real blessing. Amen. Philippians chapter 2, verse 7. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. So he's equal with God, but he's made like a man and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. My goodness, that's loaded. Look at that. So he was made in the likeness of men. Here's God, but he comes down and he's got fingers, and toes, and a mouth, and tongue, ears, eyes. God. God has fingers and toes. I heard a man the other day, he was trying to spiritualize hell, and he said that the fire and everything in hell was all spiritual because uh, it said the rich man had a tongue. The rich man did have a tongue. Your soul's shaped just like your body, right inside here. It's got eyes, mouth, everything right inside your body. That's what dying is when the soul leaves the body. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. And so uh, he said he humbled himself. Now, listen, for every one of us right now, you don't always have to be first. You don't always have to be number one. You don't always have to be the big dog. Humble yourself once in a while. Sometimes it's better off just let somebody else get ahead of you. Be, do something for somebody else. Humble yourself. I mean, God, God resisteth the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Have you ever seen these people, they walk around with their chest stuck out, their head stuck out, they're going to trip over something. If you, of course, quit looking straight up like that. Uh, you know, you think, that's like the old priest said, you think you're a hot snot, you're just a cold booger. Oh, you are. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's a Greek word for... I don't know, what is the real word for booger? <laughs> Greek. Uh, if that offends you, you're, you think too highly of yourself. Uh, but uh, just kidding, just kidding. But if, uh, you're, not, you're not nothing special. Jesus Christ humbled himself. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Glory to God. Ah, my, 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 my. You know what? He humbled himself. It, it wasn't like he was out here doing his ministry and they come and grabbed him and dragged him off and killed him. And and, and, God, and the whole time God was saying, oh, no, things have went wrong. What about our plan B? No, no. Listen, he could call 10,000 angels. He could have just went, boom, and put every one of them on a cross. All of them. And stood there and laughed at them if he wanted to. And been right to do it if he wanted to. But he let them. Now, you know when we're being more like Jesus is when we sometimes let people mistreat us and don't fight back. I know, I know. I ain't letting nobody run over me. I know that. And there is, I don't think you're supposed to just, you're not supposed to lay down like a doormat and let people walk over you. But sometimes you'd be more like Jesus if, if sometimes when you're mistreated, you just shut up and pray about it, especially if you're doing right. Like if you're giving out tracts and they laugh at you. Or you knock on the door and they slam it in your face. Something like that. Uh, humble yourself. Don't cuss them out. That ain't no way to act. Uh, I don't think you should let somebody run in your home and take care of your wife and kids. And your no, I don't mean that. You're supposed to provide and protect what's yours. But you, y'all know what I'm talking about. There's times when it, we'd be a whole lot better off at work just to keep our mouth shut. Just keep our mouth shut. And not fight back and not demand and not fuss. You know, we ain't getting treated right. Poor little me. Everybody mean to me. Everybody mean to me. That ain't no way to act. You'll be all right. Uh, you be all right. Now look here, he said, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Now I really hate to get into this because I've done, just about took up all my time, about two more minutes. But good night in the morning. Look at verse 9. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him. And given him a name above every name. Now I'm going to save that till next week. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Things every knee is going to bow. Every politician. Every Buddhist. Every atheist. Every athlete. 
every movie star, every one of them is going to bow down and confess that he's Lord to the glory of God the Father. You know that in plain language? One of these days, people, the shoe am going to be on the other foot. Amen. I mean, like the little boy playing ball, and he's out there and like that, you know, and the guy come by and the score was about 20 to nothing. They're playing baseball, and the little boy's out there, and he was throwing them in, and they was getting them out, making runs like crazy. And the guy looked up, and he said, hey, man, you ain't doing too good, are you? And he looked back and said, we ain't got the bat yet. And that's right. That's right. That's the way we are right now. The other team is having their day right now. But we ain't got the bat yet. One day we will, glory to God. Hallelujah. That ought to make a shout in your soul, buddy. We got something to shout about, people. Christian ain't got no right to drag their lip in, in and out of the house and feeling sorry for yourself all the time. Poor little you. I, I was thinking about it last night, how good God's been to us. Just how good he's been to us. I, uh, I've been listening to the choir CD all day, and I've got texts. I've got texts from, from Iowa, Florida, Georgia, New York, uh, uh, Tennessee. Uh, good night. I don't know. I don't know where I'll just on my phone today. Listen, Brother Danny. Listen, Brother Danny. Great. Wonderful. Shouting ground. Thank you for the, you know, uh, over and over and over and over and over. And you know what we done? We prayed for that thing for a long time. And God put his hand on that CD, y'all. He did. We ought to thank him for that. We got something to shout about. All right. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Everybody bow your head. Maybe you're here tonight and you're not even right with the Lord. I don't know. Maybe you're here and, and you need to get right with the Lord. I don't know. But right now would be a real good time to do it. Right now while heads are bowed, eyes are closed, it would be a good time to say, Lord, I am so dumb for letting this world get my attention and making me think it's cool. It's nothing compared to you. Lord, I pray right now you'd help me to live for you and serve you and do right. Keep my eyes on Jesus and off of this old wicked sin-cursed world. Lord, we thank you for what you've done here tonight. Thank you for everybody being here happy. And Lord, we're so glad to have this opportunity to eat together just one time a year. And Lord, I pray you go with us and give everybody a safe trip over there and back. Take care of everybody. Watch over us. Lord, I pray you'd help them people down yonder uh, with uh, uh, Darren and and, uh, and Lily and Riley and Jamie Sue and all them, Lord, getting ready for Miss Beverly's funeral. And God, I pray that your will will be done in our lives. And I pray for Carolyn Kaiser and others that are sick, Miss B, and others that have been sick. I pray you bless them. Help us now. Go with us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you tell them you're from the church. And I want to ask you one, two things. One, please don't let the kids just go get endless food and, and lay it all over the table. And stuff. Watch them, okay? Because that, that hurts hurts them and us too. And then if you if you can, leave the girls a tip. That they're, they're working late tonight, and them girls will leave them a tip if you can. If you can and we're going to give them something from the church too. All right, see you in there. Everybody know? If you didn't get your CD, you can get that on your